one of the reasons why I am unsure with the Met Gala, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I'm gonna say explicitly that the industry has been known to fetishize black men. The industry has been known to steal from various cultures and call it their own. Um, we've seen it with hairstyles. We've seen it with the color of our hair. We've seen it with, we've, we've seen it. Oh, even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never ran city, no man, I still go. Go, 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 go. My darlings, it's Dion Dean, and welcome to another video. This is going to be a fashion chat. I'm in the midst of unpacking. If you saw what this room and what my makeup station look like right now, it's quite shameful. <laughs> um, and I actually just came back from um, a doctor's appointment with mommy, and so I was like, you know what, let me get unpacking because if not, it will just sit here. And so, in the midst of unpacking, I unpacked one of the books that I took. Uh, on my journey to read on the plane and just in my downtown downtime and in the midst of reading this book we get the alert the Met Gala is going to be on black day I don't know what the ex I need I should get my um my iPad we'll wing it um I don't know if it's called black dandyism uh, well let's just say it's based on this book slaves to fashion Black Dandyism and the Styling of Black Diasporic Identity. This is by uh, Professor Monica Monica Miller. Um, if you are have been a part of this channel and you remember in the community, I actually posted this book um, a couple months ago when I got it and asked if anybody wanted to do um, a book club on it. So I guess we're going to be doing a book club on this because this is going to be the Met Gala's 2025 theme. I want to I want to say it's Black the Black Dandy. Do they actually call it the Black Dandy? I feel like they do. And the co-hosts or the board is made up of, um, let me get my iPad, hold, hold please. Okay, Vogue. This just in, Coleman Domingo, Lewis Hamilton, which is the F1 driver from England, ASAP Rocky, Pharrell Williams, and Anna Wintour will co-chair the 2025 Met Gala alongside honorary chair LeBron James and the theme is super fine, tailoring black style. Now, we know that the Met Gala is kind of a celebration of the actual is exhibit. And so the exhibit will start in May. Where is it? Where are the times? It doesn't say. But of course, regardless. Oh, no, hold on. Da, 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 da. May 5th and go no so the dress code will be announced early 2025 super fine tailoring black style will be on view may 6th through october october 26 2025 mark your calendars i will be going <laughs> i will be viewing that exhibit um so let's take it back um how do we feel about this theme I'm gonna be completely honest, I don't know. I don't know. I am in the beginning of the book, I'm in the first chapter. This is a very heavy read, it's an academic read. Um, let me talk, okay, so let's go back. Story time, please do not skip story time because it actually sets the stage. And I think that you will be more intrigued. Oh God, I have so much crap on this desk. More intrigued and more enlightened and it will spark the desire to actually read this book and really study the black dandy um, in preparation for the exhibit. And we should actually, maybe we do a meetup and we all go to the exhibit. So remember a few months ago, I will link the video if I can find it. During the summer, I went to Barnes & Noble. I picked up a few fashion magazines. This was one of them. This is System Magazine. This is the, doesn't say what, Spring, summer 2024, this is issue 22. So if you go to your nearest bar, if you live in a big city, I don't know if you live, if you live in a smaller city, I don't know if it's gonna be available, but it's definitely available online. And so I picked this magazine up, which actually has LeBron on the back and Pharrell on the inside um, in front of a picture of Virgil Abloh. And so in this magazine, it's a really awesome, awesome magazine, but they actually had a piece which is, 
let me see if I can find it. They actually had the written, um, what's the word I want to say? They did an interview. He, Pharrell Williams did an interview with Marc Jacobs, who, of course, is the former creative director of Louis Vuitton, of all Louis Vuitton. Um, and he brought ReadyWear to the brand. He is um, famous for that. He's famous in his own right, but that was his, that's his, uh, I don't want to say claim to fame, but that is, that is him. <laughs> he is, if you think about Louis Vuitton, Marc Jacobs is Louis Vuitton. So basically a transcript is what I want to say. So System Magazine, and I will, I will leave a link to the actual interview that um, Pharrell and Marc Jacobs uh, did. But they actually, and I, I've shown you this before, and I've shown you this in other videos. But anyway, <laughs> here's the stuff that's on my desk. Um, they did a transcript. They put a transcript of the interview in the in this magazine because it was by System Magazine. The interview was by System um, Magazine. And in this article, and again, go ahead and get the go and get the magazine. If you already got the magazine, because I've spoken about it before, then um, you know the interview. In the interview, <clears throat> they kind of talk about. Pharrell's involvement with the brand, with Vuitton, and just kind of gave people insight into the thought process of him becoming the creative director of Vuitton, the fact that he collaborated with Mark on, well, Mark brought him in to collaborate on so many things, millionaire shades, um, different uh, uh, sneakers, and just different things that they collaborated on. Um, they talked about Pharrell and Chanel, and Pharrell, and just everything that Pharrell had done. So they came to a point where they started talking about Pharrell meeting with the execs at Vuitton and um, Pharrell said that in the interview or in discussions, I don't think it was, I don't really think it was an interview. I think it was really like, the, we want you, <laughs> what you gonna do? But in talks with Bernard Alno, who is the CEO of LVMH, uh, Bernard kind of asked him, what do you, you know, what's the vision? What do you see as the vision for LVMH? And Pharrell said the 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 future of LVM the future of not LVMH the of Vuitton Men's because remember it was just Marc Jacobs and then it split right then we had Louis Vuitton Men's and we had Louis Vuitton Women's who Nicola Nicola Gasquet is the creative director for women and Pharrell is the creative director for men's so it was just basically saying you know who what do you see as the vision or um, where do you see Vuitton Men's fashion going and Pharrell explicitly said the future of Vuitton men's is dandy so when I read that and when I listened to it um, the only thing I know about dandy style is from what I've seen in South Africa South Africa has a, a I'm going to talk about that too um, South Africa has a certain segment of the of menswear that do dandy fashion and so because I didn't know much about it and also Pitiumo if you ever want to see men men men's wear and men dressing up okay Pituomo, I think that's how you say it. Um, Pituomo, Pituomo, I call it Pituomo. Um, but just you, you've seen it. It's just these groups of men. They're sitting on the wall. They're they're styling and profile. You've seen it before. Because as an academic, if I don't know about something immediately, <laughs> Amazon and Barnes and Noble is where I go and, and eBay. So the first book that I picked up was Slaves. Uh, slave to fashion and that's the one that I shared with you guys but I also shared this book which is Dandy Lion the Black Dandy and Street Style and so I'm going to leave both of these books and also a link to the system magazine so why am I telling you this because the reason why I don't and this is the, this is by Chantrell P. Lewis one of the reasons why I am unsure with the Met Gala. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to say explicitly that the industry has been known to fetishize black men. The industry has been known to steal from various cultures and call it their own. Um, we've seen it with hairstyles. We've seen it with the color of our hair. We've seen it with, we've, we've seen it and black and brown cult cultures have just been stolen from over and over again and so initially when i heard it i was i was i was excited because the black dandy influences fashion and has been influencing fashion andre 3000 um Jada is it jadana i would say jadana uh, classic man you guys know what i'm talking about 
um, oh gosh, every athlete that puts on a suit, right? Um, African dandies. If we look at Burna Boy, why is Burna Boy not on this list? Um, Wizkid. If we look at, oh gosh, if we go back in history, there's a there's a picture that all the Chicago boys. If you guys are from Chicago, you know the picture. I think it's like three young boys sitting on the car. If we th if we think about my father, our fathers, our grandfathers, and how they dressed. Um, you know, in the in the 50s, in the 40s, in the 50s, in the 60s, if we think about Cab Calloway, if we think about the Harlem Renaissance, like the Met Gal, <laughs> I just want them to get it right. I just want them to get it right. So what is a dandy? Um, because I think once we once we break that down in this book, again, I'm reading from Dandelion, the Black Dandy in Street Style. Um, and this is just going to be like a casual conversation. I hope that you appreciate this kind of content. I just want to have like a classroom discussion because I don't have a classroom anymore. So you guys are it. And I love that for us. Um, so in the book, in the intro in the book, it explains what a dandy is. Um, it says specific attributes and attitudes distinguish the black dandy from the everyday dapper don, right? So there's the black dandy and the dapper don. A black dandy is a gentleman who intentionally appropriates classical European fashion, but with an African diasporan aesthetic and sensibility. The word dandy may evoke ideas of bygone white men in waistcoats, multi-layered blouses with puffy sleeves. It's a true. It, it's true that historically dandyism has always been outside the traditional tropes of masculinity, queer in a sense, but dandies also threaten the existing class structure structure by dressing up. A black man employing the strategy is even more radical and submersive. By looking sharp, the black dandy fashions a sense of pride, positivity, and self-worth that can transcend circumstances as well as societal perceptions. He defies monolithic understandings of what it is to be a man, particularly a black man, through a colorful complex, colorful, <clears throat> excuse me, and complex dance between race class, gender, power, and style. Will <laughs> the Met Gala, I don't know how they're going to interpret, I don't know how people outside of the culture are going to interpret this style. And for that, I am a little weary. Um, I'm gonna show you a few pictures of within this, let me see. I'm gonna pop up some pictures on the side I probably have already, um, but there there are some South African, where are the ones? Oh gosh, I just think of Andre, the oh, Janelle Monet. Why is she not on the list to be a contributor? Like, come on, like, yeah, okay, or co-host. I just think of Andre 3000. I really do. And I, I hope that, I hope he makes a comeback just for that. So yeah, so dandy style is clean. It's classic. It's, I just think about my dad and my uncles, pictures of them in the 60s going out to listen to ska music or to go dance to ska music. That's what I think of when I think of dandy style. Um, just, yeah. So I'm excited about it. So why now is the question right why now and i think it goes back not i think it goes back to who is paying for this well it's actually sponsored if i can i believe if i can go back into my memory bank at the end of the announcement it said sponsored by louis vuitton the fashion industry does nothing unknowingly they are not the industry is a business it's not altruistic what i think is happening what i believe is happening is louis vuitton men's because remember lvmh also owns dior right and so kim jones is over at dior i think that lvmh is positioning themselves as the house for luxury menswear I think that this is them taking a stance and saying that we are, if you're a man, <laughs> you wanna be clean, <laughs> come to LVMH. That's what I think. I think that it's no surprise that uh, Pharrell is um, the creative director. I think it's no surprise of the, 
when I watch the show, I'm gonna tell you a story, okay? And I don't know, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys know this about me, but my minor is French, and I did a semester abroad in Paris in 1999. And I don't talk about it that much because I have, and I don't talk about France that much or Paris that much because I have a dis, I have a distaste for Paris, and it has come from my time spent in Paris and the treatment of my friends from Senegal and Cote d'Ivoire that I made while I was there. It was the harassment that we faced, we including I, and being stopped by the police with their guns and asking to see, they didn't ask for my passports, but they asked for all of my guy friends' passports. And my friends would be like, tranquille, tranquille, tranquille my ass, excuse me, tranquille my butt. <laughs> the rebel blood in me was boiling. Um, that being said, their treatment of Africans, of, of, Franco, of Af Africans from Francophone countries, I find deplorable. Um, it's continuing to go on. Um, within the sports industry, they continuously, you know, when when French, when Anglophone, Anglo, when French African um, or French players of African descent are asked about their nationality and they say they're French, the the French are quick to let them know that they are African. That happens a lot. And so, that being said, when I watched Pharrell's last show and i saw these beautiful black men walking down the runway in vuitton it did something to me and there are two three there are three pieces that stand out to me there is one bomber jacket i think it is or i think it's a bomber jacket and it literally has the african continent on the front there's another one that has the globe on the front, but again, Africa is very prominent. And then the uh, the third look is the leather soccer jersey um, on a beautiful black man. And if you, again, if you know about what has happened in the past with the soccer players and the way that they are teased and taunted and not considered French, but they are from whatever their country is, like you're not French, like you're not really French, you're, you know. So those pieces to me were so revolutionary and Pharrell knows exactly what his what he's doing. Um, so that being said, why am I telling you this story? Because the fact that the Met has even chosen to put this on display says a lot about Vuitton and where they see the brand going, where they see men's fashion going and who, who who they see wearing their clothing. And that is all due to Virgil. That's due to Kanye, like him or love him. That's due to my, my Chicago. I'm gonna say it again, Chicago. Um, I'm interested, I, I hope I'm not rambling, but like, I'm just, I'm, I'm so very interested to see how this is going to play out. I'm interested to see what people wear, the brands that they wear. Will they invite, will they be wearing African designers? Will they pull into the the Africans, the South Africans, the Nigerians, the Ghanaians, the continent? Um, the, I wanna see the prints, I wanna see Ankara, I wanna see, I wanna see everything. I, I I I want to see everything. I'm eager to um yeah, I'm eager to see that. So yeah, that is my stance. Um because I, I I'm literally I'm like, you know, just la 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 reading the book and then I'm seeing I'm seeing the, the author, uh Professor Miller, and I'm just like, what is going on? And yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm proud of her um as an academic. I'm proud I'm just proud. I'm proud I'm excited, but I am still a little weary. Um, yeah, so that's my take. Not that you asked for it, but I just wanted to have a discussion. This is something that I definitely would have talked about in the classroom, the intersection of fashion, style, race, gender, uh, queerness, all of that is gonna come into play and it's a very big stage for them to put something so personal. That's the, that's what I'm that's what I'm getting at. I think the black dandyism, black queerness, 
Um, black masculinity is so precious to us. And if they don't get it right, Mm. positive thoughts positive thoughts all right my darling thank you guys so much for watching if you have any comments please let me know if you have any thoughts what are you thinking um are you familiar with the black dandy who's your favorite mine is gonna be Andre 3000 yeah that's Andre 3000 uh because they talk about him so much in the book i'm like oh yeah um but there are so many more and go to pinterest and put in black dandy and you're gonna see a plethora of 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 beautiful beautiful um black men in their best wares all right my darlings thank you thank you thank you thank you if you've watched this far thank you so much for watching um definitely give me a like let me know if this is content that you enjoy and i will definitely bring you more if you would like to start a reading group um, this is a, again, this is a dense read, um, but we can get through it. <laughs> a dense read in that, you know, it's not reading like a novel. It is, it's going to make you think, it's going to make you ponder. It's going to expand your thoughts on what it is to be black and queer. And it's not just men that are, that are in this as well. Um, but it's, it's going to make you think. And so if this is something that you're interested in that you would like to do a book club on, please let me know. Um, if you don't let me know, then I won't know. Um, but I'll definitely leave a discussion if you guys want it. And of course, I will leave a link to this book um, and this book in the description box. Thank you guys so much and have a wonderful day. Mwah. Bye. Go, go.